But when a TV cameraman came up to me and asked me some questions, I told him right off the bat, I said, I'm really glad to be home, I'm proud of my service, but I am against the war in Iraq. And I, I know that some family members and some friends weren't pleased that I said that. They thought it was maybe inappropriate at that time. But if every soldier comes home and they just say that they're glad to be home, then no one's going to know the truth about what's going on in Iraq. Flags are bits of colored cloth that governments use first to shrink wrap people's brains and then as ceremonial shrouds to bury the dead. The U.S. military as an institution is very corrupt and is, is built upon spreading death. To me, the idea of having a force like the U.S. Army participating in nation building is, is just asinine. I mean, we're, we're nation destroyers. That's what we're trained to do. We were all congra congratulated after we had our first kills. Uh, my company commander personally congratulated me. This is the same individual who has stated that whoever gets their first kill by stabbing them to death will get a four-day pass when we return from Iraq. I've heard numerous circumstances of, uh, of civilians getting killed and then um, you know, soldiers and Marines subsequently uh, placing weapons on their bodies or placing wire on them. Army Private First Class Lavina Johnson would have turned 23 this month, but three years ago the African-American teenager from Missouri was found dead in Bladera, just a few weeks short of her 20th birthday. Her body was found in a tent belonging to the private military contractor Kellogg Brown and Root. She had abrasions all over her body, a broken nose, a black eye, burned hands, loose teeth, acid burns on her chest a bullet hole in her head. The Army labeled Lavina Johnson's death a suicide. They told her parents she died of self-inflicted non-combat injuries. Oh, hey, tell, yeah. say it again. Say again what happened. Say what? You know, like, what was going on? What was it like being a guard there? Guard it. Yeah. 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 That place, man. It's fucking world famous now. As far as I'm concerned, they're all guilty. You know what? They should have kicked Saddam out themselves. Instead, we're there doing the fucking job. Fuck them, dude. Anyone with a fucking rag on their head is very good. Girl. She's probably like 15 years old. See it, right? Well, I hadn't been, been touched yet. She was fucking crying. Oh. So, guys, he started pimping around for 50 bucks a shot. I think at the end of the day, you know, he made like 500 bucks before she hung herself. Really. Four soldiers walked through the trees and approached this house. Here, according to specialist James Barker's statement, he and another soldier took it in turns to rape the 14-year-old girl. In another room, the girl's parents and five-year-old sister were shot dead. Barker's statement said after Green had killed the two adults and the little girl, he came into the room where the teenager was being sexually assaulted. He had an AK-47 rifle in his hand. He said, they're all dead. I killed them. He put the weapon down raped the 14-year-old and then shot her dead too. Before they left, they poured kerosene over the girl's body and set it alight. They returned to their checkpoint and Barker said he grilled some chicken wings. Four years ago at the age of 19, Ms. Jamie Lee Jones signed a contract to become an employee of KBR, then a Halliburton subsidiary. Ms. Jones arrived in Iraq in July of 2005 and was housed in barracks with 400 men and only a few women. Four days after her arrival, Ms. Jones was drugged and gang raped. After Ms. Jones reported the rape to her supervisors, she was locked in a shipping container with an armed guard and prohibited any contact with the outside world. They locked her in a container. According to the Center for Defense Information, 51% of your federal income taxes go specifically to military spending. Not health care or education, but war. So cute, so cute. Your puppy. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, you're almost there, man. <laughs> <That's fucked up. laughs>
Why was her child, one of an increasing number born with deformities since the war, like this? Massive growth which was rapidly spreading across the little girl's face. Case after case of differing deformities without any real explanation, except their parents' suspicions that the deformities were caused by chemicals such as white phosphorus used by the Americans during the war. A Geiger counter will give a reading of between 5 and 15 pulses per minute in a typical environment. This depleted uranium round will trigger 10,000 pulses in about 40 seconds. This type of ammunition is radioactive because it is made of nuclear waste referred to as uranium-238 or depleted uranium. This material is left over from the processing of uranium-234 used for atomic bombs and uranium-235 used in nuclear power plants. Uranium-238 remains radioactive for four and a half billion years, and its toxicity reveals itself as soon as particles are inhaled or ingested. Cancer and birth defects are the most common side effects. We have an obligation to every last victim of this illegal aggression because all of this carnage has been done in our name. Since World War II, 90% of the casualties of war are unarmed civilians, a third of them children. Our victims have done nothing to us. From Palestine to Afghanistan to Iraq to Somalia to wherever our next target may be, their murders are not collateral damage. They are the nature of modern warfare. They don't hate us because of our freedoms. They hate us because every day we are funding and committing crimes against humanity. The so-called war on terror is a cover for our military aggression to gain control of the resources of Western Asia. This is sending the poor of this country to kill the poor of those Muslim countries. This is trading blood for oil. This is genocide. And to most of the world, we are the terrorists. In these times, remaining silent on our responsibility to the world and its future is criminal. And in light of our complicity in the supreme crimes against humanity in Iraq and Afghanistan and ongoing violations of the UN Charter and international law, how dare any American criticize the actions of legitimate resistance to illegal occupation? Our so-called enemies in Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, our other colonies around the world, and our inner cities here at home are struggling against the oppressive hand of empire, demanding respect for their humanity. They are labeled insurgents or terrorists for resisting rape and pillage by the white establishment, but they are our brothers and sisters in the struggle for justice. The civilians at the other end of our weapons don't have a choice, but American soldiers have choices. And while there may have been some doubt five years ago, today we know the truth. Our soldiers don't sacrifice for duty, honor, country. They sacrifice for Kellogg, Brown, and Root. They don't fight for America, they fight for their lives and their buddies beside them because we put them in a war zone. They're not defending our freedoms. They're laying the foundation for 14 permanent military bases to defend the freedoms of ExxonMobil and British Petroleum. They're not establishing democracy. They're establishing the basis for an economic occupation to continue after the military occupation has ended. Iraqi society today, thanks to American help, is defined by house raids, death squads, checkpoints, detentions, curfews, blood in the streets, and constant violence. We must dare to speak out in support of the Iraqi people who resist and endure the horrific existence we brought upon them through our bloodthirsty imperial crusade. We must dare to speak out in support of those American war resistors, the real military heroes who uphold their oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, including those terrorist cells in Washington, D.C., more commonly known as the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. Frederick Douglass said, those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation, are people who want crops without plowing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the roar of its many waters. The struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. 
Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. Every one of us, every one of us must keep demanding, keep fighting, keep thundering, keep plowing, keep speaking, keep struggling until justice is served. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace.